My name is Dean Burke. I live here in Tacoma, and uh, I spend a lot of time on the water. So the, uh, the show here is titled Tacoma in the Sea, and it's a moniker that was born by accident, really. The whole idea, the photography, the, the stories behind it um, was a very natural occurrence for me because I am in the water a lot, and it didn't used to be that way. Um, Tacoma has an interesting history that I think a lot of us know uh, in terms of its industrial past and what it what it was and, and you know that's what got Tacoma off the ground and it really uh, is, is vital to our history but um, when it when it all ended it really left behind um, you know the party was over right and, and the trash was everywhere and it it left a lot of shoreline inaccessible for people to get into the water and it left the waters filthy um, we have had as many as eight active EPA Superfund sites in Commencement Bay and, and, the, and the waters here at once. We have one now. I think when people thought about human power access, you know, if they wanted to go kayaking or canoeing or something like that, or, or swimming, they usually got in the car and, and went somewhere else. And it's fair, you know, I mean, I, I've lived here long enough to, to remember when it was pretty gross to, to get in as well or to, or to think about. So. Um, so it really kind of put up a, it was kind of a fence of sorts to society for, for the city to be able to engage in the water. And you leave that up long enough and it really changes the way people, be, the way the whole city behaves, the way it, the way it regards itself against its own shoreline. So as that change has come about, and now that we have the cleaner waters and the cleaner shorelines, we have what I like to refer to as barefoot access to a lot of water. So that means just just like what it sounds when you say it, barefoot access. You can you can get in and out of the water without stepping on industrial rubble. You know, there's not rebar or concrete or broken glass or whatever. Um, you have that access, and you have remediated sites, and and you you get those EPA problems cleaned up. You you begin to see the city's own reflection of itself change in how the shoreline works. So we really start to see that change, and we see. Um, again, how people's behavior and their attitudes change and how they, they become stewards of it, they become champions of it. And then for those who, who take that next step and they actually cross that threshold from land to sea um, and they get out there, that, that's when really things, I think, start to change quite dramatically. And that's, that's where I think I come in with the, the photos and stuff is, is these images are, it started out for me as just a, a way to show my friends and family what I see when I'm out there. You know, it was just really a simple, like, this is really amazing. And yet right behind me is this massive urban backdrop. And, and any day of the week I can get up early and I can completely separate myself from the million people that live on these, on these shorelines. And I can be uh, far enough away from land that I can't hear what's going on. And, and I can have some of the most in, incredible uh, wild experiences in my life that, that I'll ever have right here, you know. And a lot of that's captured here in this stuff, whether it's being out paddling and having an orca come up to you. And I, and I don't mean just passing by in the distance. I mean, going out of their way to come on their terms and see what you're doing, you know, or humpback whales or eagles or whatever, or, or just how we express ourselves to it. So at one point, you know, some of these photos even started a process where um, people were reaching out like from University of Washington and Center for Urban Waters and saying, Hey, can we look at some of these photos? We're, we're seeing things that we hadn't seen here in a while. And it, and it almost became a uh, um, documentation, you know, process for them to, to help research, which was, which was a fun process and, and, um, and, and cultivated some interesting relationships with, uh, you know, some of the scientists and, and workers who have been part of the cleanup and, and uh, an ongoing education with, with future students and stuff. So when people find it within themselves to make that to take that step across into the water, right? When they, when they decide that they want to have a relationship with the sea, so to speak, you know, and, and do something out there, whether it's, whether it's just to go rent a kayak or something or a paddleboard uh, or, or get their own equipment or, or go learn how to swim in the water here, um, whatever that may look like for them. When, when they do that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of the cheerleader to say, do it, you know, try it like it's ready. Like there's so much work has been done to prepare this and, and now's a great time to do it. And, and then you get out there and you just see what becomes of you because you can't, 
you can't go out there and not be changed. You can't go out there and not have amazing experiences. You can go out there 100 days in a row and have 100 different experiences. If you want to get involved with an environmental group, there's many that are great. Or if you want to get involved in education or you, you want to just um, enjoy it more for yourself or take a kid fishing or whatever the case may be, there, you, something's going to happen. You're, you're going to become something. You're going to become a steward and an ambassador of this, of this place and these waters and the experiences that you have. And, um, and I think you'll be better for it. And, and I think that, you know, as individuals, we are changed dramatically by these experiences in the sea. And when we can scale that to a city, our behavior changes socially and it changes as, as far as how our city even moves forward with its relationship to the sea. So I just hope that that's what these images kind of capture, that they, they unlock the, the mind and the imagination because these are real and these are here. As you can see, there's some pretty amazing experiences and, and images to be, uh, to be had and to be seen, to be seen here and um, all with the backdrop of a big urban density as, as well. So um, I'm thankful that, uh, that people have been touched by this and, and, uh, and choose to engage it. I'm proud of where we live and uh, proud to be a part of the work that's hopefully helping us continue um, toward a, a good balance that we can do this.